I believe this is the second week, isn't it, with the new books? Is that right? Yes. Yes, so we're using the orange booklets. And we begin on page one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Our first hymn is number 10, All Creatures of Our God and King.
we continue on page two. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gloria. To God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So the collect for the second Sunday before Lent, let us pray. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen the first of the readings. The reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, 
and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honour and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth for ever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth for ever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. This is the word of the Lord. We sing hymn 499, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out and while they were sailing he fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake and the boat was filling with water and they were in danger. 
They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water? And they obey him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You might think that's quite an apt reading after the week we've had, but I'm not going to particularly talk about that. Apart from today, you may be guessing, is often called Creation Sunday in the church calendar. And so we focus our thoughts on creation, God as the creator and Jesus of Lord, as Lord of all. Even the winds and the waves obey him. Sadly, as we look around the world today, we can feel swamped by the horror and devastation taking place in various countries. The lives being lost and the injuries are sustained in wars and conflicts. The destruction of the natural world by modern technology, not to mention the personal issues we all have to face from time to time. Now it has to be said that whenever the story of Jesus calm in the storm is told at any children's clubs I've ever been involved with, it's always well received. Probably because the children enjoy the drama of pretending to be tossed around by a stormy sea. In the story we hear of the disciples being so afraid that they wake up Jesus from his sleep. We're not told what they expected of him, but we're told that he gave an order to the wind and the stormy water. In fact, in Mark's version of the same story, he commanded the storm to be still before questioning the disciples' faith. Sometimes we're in danger of being swamped by the storms of life. There are our personal storms like sickness, loneliness, trouble, disappointments and bereavement. Then there are the storms with which we're bombarded in the news or on our TVs. It can seem that someone has opened the floodgates and that we're drowning in the sea which is beyond our control. Some time ago in a newspaper which I read regularly, the Church Times, there was an article which tried to answer the question, how can we respond to the horrors that are poured into our homes by the media without being overwhelmed? A glib answer would be to say, ignore it. But that, of course, is out of the question, particularly for anyone who professes to be a Christian. The parable of the Good Samaritan, as the article pointed out, challenges us to see even the most unlikely person as our neighbour. Yet if our neighbour is everyone we hear of who is in any kind of trouble, then how quickly we could become overwhelmed. We cannot take everything on ourselves. Letting go is important, as the correspondent wrote. Even the Good Samaritan, in the end, paid up and went on his way. However, it isn't that easy, is it? We hold on to things, we worry, we think that somehow we should be able to do something, anything. Well, we can. We can take a special interest. We can do whatever is practical. But ultimately, we should pray. We should place whatever is troubling us into God's hands and trust him. Have faith in his ability to deal with it in his way. Unfortunately, it's all too easy not to do this or to turn to God as a last resort instead of first, I know because I've done it. Jesus was with the disciples in the middle of the storm they faced, yet they were still afraid. Jesus brought peace. He offers us peace, not peace as the world gives, not an instant end to all the wars around us. The armed conflicts go on, the tragic news headlines continue, yet they don't batter us into submission. For Christ is there to say, be still, be quiet. We do all face storms of one kind or another during the course of our lives. Trouble, disappointments, quarrels, setbacks, accidents, illness. And every storm severely tests our faith in God. For though we turn to God in the middle of the storm, 
but at the same time we often doubt him. Being a Christian is no guarantee that we will be spared the storms of life. Jesus didn't promise that our lives would be one of luxury like a Mediterranean cruise. Rather, he hinted that they would have to pass through many stormy waters. Therefore, when the storm strikes us, we must not feel that God has abandoned us, much less that he's punished us. Sometimes we may feel that we can no longer cope on our own when life is stormy. Our own resources are not enough. The waves of anger, fear, pain and despair rise up and threaten to engulf us just like the waves with the boat. It's then that we must believe that Jesus is with us and that his help is available to us. Jesus is Lord of creation and that includes us. He didn't save his friends from having to face the storm, but what he did was to be present with them in the middle of it, helping them to come through it. He will do that for us too. And he asks us, his followers, to do the same for anyone else caught up in the middle of a storm, whatever it may be. Amen. So let us stand and declare our faith using the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated on you as we come to the intercessions. Let us pray. Holy God, sometimes our lives are so full of worries that we forget how you look after us through every aspect of our lives. When our worries begin to spiral out of control, help us to turn them into a conversation with you confident that you will calm our anxiety and give us hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for your church and the churches in our local communities, asking that there will be a growing desire to get together. We give you thanks for those who come up with fresh ways of making your name known to the wider community. We remember the General Synod, which met just this month, and for all those who work so hard to make important and sometimes difficult decisions regarding the everyday running of the Church of England. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Mighty God, we pray for peace in our world. May all lands that suffer violence and injustice find peace and reconciliation. We pray for the peoples of the world and all who offer their services in the leadership of the affairs of the world, that they may uphold what is right and good. We pray particularly at this time for peace in all places where there is violence, war and terrorism. Lord, in your mercy. 
Father God, we thank you for the joy of human love and for all of those whom we, among whom we live and work. We pray particularly for loved ones who worry us with their health or circumstances or life decisions. We pray for those among our friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we pray for all who bear the burdens of pain, bereavement, worry and depression. We pray for those whose illness stems from anxiety. We pray that they may have an awareness of your presence and an understanding that you are bearing those burdens with them and always working toward their healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, through your love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Comfort those who grieve in their sorrow and those who are worried about how they will cope on their own and reassure them that you will never leave them to carry the burdens of life unaided. Lord, in your mercy. Everlasting God, we ask you to lead us into the coming week. Help us to believe that you are close by us. Keep us from making mistakes and help us never to disappoint you through our words and actions. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's stand for the peace. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we offer one another a sign of peace. Now we're going to sing again, and it's 491 Love Divine or Love's Excelling.
page 22, Eucharistic Prayer B, page 22. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Page 12. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And we pray together. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, 
trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Creator, by your gift the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. 
Amen. So we're going to stand and we're going to have some joy in a slightly different way with number 853. I think Gwen's going to play it through at least twice, aren't you? And it will probably be faster the second time round, okay? <laughs> Amen. Amen.